couple that I can share with you right now. Um, there's three, um, there's, there's three concepts or principles or mindsets that I live by. And what are they? Number one, P for, uh, for passion, passion, passion. I'll talk about that more in, a little, in just a sec. Two, purpose, purpose. Three, perspective, passion, purpose, and perspective. I wanted to start this video out um, to talk about some of the awesome things that have happened this last year, like a year in review. Um, here's, here's the challenge. There's so much that has happened that I can't quite put it all in in like a 10 minute video. I've had people that tell me that uh, my videos are I've been long. shooting videos um, daily about my life now for over three years. They make up my video collages. I love my new life at Mercantile Square Lofts in Denver. It's a dream come true. Also, I love my lift business. I'm in a completely new place, much different than I was about a year and a few months ago. The challenge is taking like 3,800 videos that I've shot day by day in, um, about my life and my story and then condensing it into a, a series of 10 minute videos. It's next to impossible. For example, this picture, I can talk about the fact I drove about 200,000 miles through COVID when I returned from my last trip to Japan, which was two months from October to December 18th. It could be better. It's time to shake things up. With the Capital One Venture Card, you get double miles on everything you buy, not just airline purchases. Seriously, think of all the things you buy. Great. Is this why you asked me to coffee? Well, yeah, but also to catch up. <laughs> What's in your wallet? rates in America. Banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> even easier than this. Stop. You're in. Oh, cool. Yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Hello, my friends. It is January 6th, about just after 7 a.m. I am at my Capital One Cafe, and this is what turned into my daily 7 a.m. ritual. Capital One, your bank space, your bank pace. So that's where I am. One of the reasons I come here is the windows, the view. Hey, this is Doug. It's the wee hours of January 6th. I've been here at the studio since mid-August when I qualified to put an application in on Friday. Just the high points. This is my studio. This is how it looked when it was empty mid-August. And this is the outside of the Mercantile Square Lofts building. And this is the secured entrance that I go to. And this is my Prius that I now have, which is a miracle I have it. Uh, it's, I also use it for my lift business, which is my primary source of income. This is City Park, which is about two miles Hello. from where I live. This is January 6th. You know who I am. This is Doug. This is my lower downtown studio. I'm hoping if Chicago's here or Yuki's here or any of my friends that you at least watch 10 minutes of this if it's an hour. And think in terms that if you watch 10 minutes and it's an hour, you can watch six 10-minute increments so you don't have to sit and watch this whole hour. In fact, you watch, this is only 26 seconds, so this could be a 30 second clip. So when I say I've got 2000 photos and videos, this is a good shot of the BD Mongolian grill since night. This, this video could be like five hours long. I know, dude, but I just, I'm, I'm, here's what I'm doing. You understand folks, I'm going through all my, I have 3000, almost 4000 photos. So I'm just with my iPhone shooting in 4K on my big screen. I'm just, easiest thing to do is just to shoot and talk, now, right? Encinitas, I'm in Denver now, but I've mentioned last winter, this time, this is where I was. This is a place called 
the Better Buzz Coffee Shop. It was kind of the instantaneous version of St. Mark's Coffee. I didn't know at this point when I was camping out my Toyota van coming to, to the Better Buzz that in Denver, I'd end up finding another place like this and that place would turn into my Better Buzz place, but in Denver. And that's What's kind of funky when you do these? You have your phone, I have my phone, okay? I'm talking to my phone. By the way, I shave. Look at this dude, he, he shaved. When I have my phone and I'm walking in public and you're facing it to you, everybody assumes you're videotaping them and they look at you, don't, don't videotape me. So that's why it's so cool when I meet people like Jordans, the two Jordans, and Maddie and the crew at the BD Grill, that I started going to when I moved into my loft last August, who were great in front of the camera. And they were cool with it to the point that, he, listen to this very carefully. I would drive for Lyft, I started driving May, make my $100 quota, because that only took about four hours, park my car, walk over to BD. Now this was a, this is a key point when they were open, right? Have a beer, um, have a bowl, hang out. And what's cool with Lyft, if I want to spend 20 bucks on beer and whatever, I just have to work another extra hour or something and it pays for that. So I did that. It's now January. I did that all through the summer, but here's the key point. I started doing that filming and shooting film and making friends with the BD crew, but please understand that when I started going there as a customer. Just a quick shot of my Prius, which is a 2017 Touring, in my parking garage with the backdrop of the uh, train station in the heart of lower downtown. This is where I live. I was just going there initially because it was one block away and I love the place. Okay. Let me make, this is Cam, he's the best dude at the Magnolian Stir Fry. And Lodo, a block from my Lodo block. He's the main dude, this is what I just made. But organically, when I told them I was doing these video collages. Let me take a video of, just do your thing. Okay. This is one of the main dudes here at Mongolian Grill. He did a double the other night. Now he's doing a single. He's a bartender, he's a server. He's a master man here. He's the main dude, I accept this is the Asian. Oh, I should say he's the main dude. This is the main dude here. This is Jordan. We share, we share power. Okay, they share the power. He said he shares the power with you. And this is Daniel. He's off duty. He's eating his own food and drinking tequila here. Cheers. They embraced it, just like the Capital One folks do. Um, Blake, who's one of the employees there, is going to start coming to my loft. And we're going to start doing podcasts and videos. He said he can't really talk about Capital One, but what he can do, he's doing this fashion stuff. He's gonna have me videotape. He's gonna have me videotape the fashion stuff. And then he knows a lot of people in the fashion and movie industry. That's what St. Mark's Coffee was. In fact, one of, I don't know where he is, one of my friends who I used to hang out with at the library at Starbucks in here named Brian, who used to work with Discovery Channel, said he got a high, high paying job in Denver prior to me coming. And he was one who's kind of critical of my work, but at the same time, he was a professional. He actually did real live TV programs. He made over $100,000 a year. And we used to hang out and talk and he actually was homeless. He was homeless. I was sleeping in my van, but he was actually homeless. And he said he was coming to Denver. It's kind of funny. I've been here almost a year. I still haven't connected oh, with him. When I lived in Arizona City, we did have a small market, but it didn't look like this. And for me to go to a Whole Foods, frankly, I'd have to drive about an hour, probably into Phoenix or Tucson. And I'll be honest with you, 
Most of the time I just drove into the terminal, got my truck ready, checked with dispatch, got dispatched and left. I rarely spent any time in Phoenix. I was in Arizona 10 years and I didn't spend any time in Phoenix doing stuff. Mostly went to Phoenix, loaded my truck, got it set up, got dispatched and left. Or I came back, delivered the load, parked the truck, drove home. I did that for basically 10 years. I never went to a Whole Foods in Phoenix. But now, there's a Whole Foods 10 minutes out my door. This video record, uh, requires some backstory. That's the, that was the Platte River. Only about a 15 minute walk from my loft. This is my one of my best friends. He's now in Columbia, I think. Every time I turn around, he's in Columbia. Anyway, the second day I qualified, second day, I actually qualified on Monday. But the second day I, I was in my loft, my friend Freddie, who I've known, gosh, almost 25, 30 years, he picked me up. We went to Costco. We bought a one well, night. We, I bought a 65 inch TV. It's a long story why I even bought that with some paper towels and stuff. And he recorded this video. Or I record this video of him talking, telling about how we both were talking about moving eventually into this mercantile square loft. I was driving a truck for years, specifically 12 years, but nine years, four months with night. And when I was fired last November and I no longer had a job, he kept telling me that I could potentially qualify to move into the Mercantile Square loft at a discount. Well, here's the bottom line. I did move in with a 60% discount. Now, that doesn't mean anything to you, but for me, I went from being fired and my parents selling my house, losing my job, camping out in Encinitas in like a matter of like months, being back to Denver where I used to live and being in a loft that Freddie actually rented way back in 1996. So this video, it was the second day this was in August. Now it's like January. So I just wanted to give you some context so you might have some appreciation if you watch this oh, now. Look at this, dude. Making friends tour. Wow, look at all this shit, dude. No, I didn't find anything of this in Arizona, dude. Well, it's a pretty liberal place, dude, with a lot of hippies and marijuana. It's like the Amsterdam of the U.S. here, dude. I know I'm kind of getting that feeling, dude. Red Rocks, we got all the amphitheaters and and the hippie dudes and the people working remote. I'm kind of liking this dude. And I think it's actually better than when you left it January of 2009. The only th bad part, dude, you're 13 years older, you're 69, dude. You're 69, you're no longer 49, 42, 45. You're, you're an old dude. Well, I can still make friends, dude. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I, I can't go into the BD Grill and make some friends with the dudes there. I'm going to prove that to you, man. I may be an old dude, ex-trucker guy that got fired last November, but I am a happening dude when I get around people. I'm going to prove it to you, dude, right this now. This is the head temple. Amy and her, my, her husband and I and the members of the Nichiren Shoshu temple that I belong to in Tokyo went to the head temple um, the last two times I've been in, in, to Japan. I went twice. You can see the Mount Fuji in the background. This was at the head temple uh, when I went to the head temple in Now there Japan. is multiple locations when I'm out and about driving my car, lift, there's other Whole Foods all over, but this one just literally, I walk right across the street from my parking lot to the train station here, and Whole Foods is just right around the corner. I, um, I got uh, wrapped up making my videos, and I forgot to start a load of wash this morning at my laundry. Wow, dude, yeah, it's probably been off for a long time, dude. 
I know, I just completely spaced it out, dude. Wow, okay, let's get it in the dryer. We can go continue with our video. Let's go bite the bullet, dude. I know, I'm a space kid, because I get wrapped up in these videos, dude, and I completely forgot I started my vlog. I just got uh, wrapped up making my videos, and I forgot to start a load of wash this morning at my laundry. Wow, dude, yeah, it's probably been off for a long time, dude. I know, I just completely spaced it out, dude. Wow, okay, let's get it in the dryer. We can go continue with our video. Let's go bite the bullet, dude. I know, I'm a space kid, because I get wrapped up in these videos, dude, and I completely forgot I started my Ever mom. consider the possibility, dude, you're addicted to making these videos, you know? Because, I mean, usually you're on point, man. You know, you don't usually space it out. Plus, there's a counter on your phone, dude. You're being totally sp I know it's just cold weather, dude. I can't go for my walk this morning because it's negative 14 degrees, and I can't go out, so that throws my whole DMO off, dude. So, let's just forget the whole mistake. We'll go back to our video in a second. We just got to start a video, start a little dryer right now. It's not the end of the world, man. You just you get... I mean, it takes, it, you have to admit, dude, it takes a little bit of concentration to do when your video collages. I hope you have your key, dude. That'd be really major fuck up, you. Now I got my key right here, dude. You should just push the button in so you just open it, dude. You didn't have to, like, lock the door, dude. This is a picture in North Las Vegas. You can see my night badge. This is LC. She's a female driver. What's really sad about, for me, even to this day, that was last November when night fired me over a micro sleep. Hey dude, why don't we call this evening's video driving to Tokyo high performance team and then add taking you places you've never gone before, dude. Recorded by yours truly, Doug Werma, on January 5th, 2023. My driving to Tokyo channel and everything that's happened I realized I was watching Matt's um, videos. He was talking about how the average person, when he was when he drew, when he ran a twenty six mile mar marathon, only one percent or one percent of a hundred has done it. By the way, truck driving uh, is a little bit. It's not exactly like or the same thing as truck driving. I know from experience. I'm a million mile truck driver. Nine. Actually, technically 750,000 miles per night. But here's my point. It's a marathon. It might not seem that way, but if you're watching from the outside on a smartphone or just watch from the outside in, my friend Donald and my friend Aaron first get it. Because Scott was... In, a driver, I don't know what he's doing now, but I visited him actually at the night North Las Vegas terminal when Sa Sari showed up. Wow, I mean, that's kind of trippy, dude. Now, how are you can get out of here? Well, we just, I, feel, I took the long way. We can just right over here through this wooden platform bridge and go back there and just tell him, I want, a, I want 85% um, percent, percent alcohol in the form of I still can't get over this listen very closely okay I gave I started driving a truck when I was 55 I drove for three years with CRST before I even came tonight I traveled about 600,000 miles with another co-driver or co-drivers so by the time I came to night I had you know 300,000 miles you need 100,000 to be a certified driver I drove 750,000 miles at night. I was told a few years ago that it earned them a million dollars. I can't even tell you how many loads I did. They messed up on a load and they would give it to me because they knew it could be done. So I have a micro sleep. And a micro sleep, what they didn't understand is it's a fatigue oriented event. The corporate people like Madeline, who's the drive van terminal manager that I interviewed, who actually said she wanted to ride in the truck with her, <sighs> they all go to work at 7 a.m. They go home at 5. They sleep in their own beds. They're not working all around the clock, all kinds of weird hours. They didn't understand the driver's standpoint that when I 
started my shift at 4 a.m., my last load to go home after my 10 hour break, that a micro sleep isn't like a, I'm driving reckless or I'm under the influence or whatever. It's a fatigue oriented event. Basically what happens is, the procedure is if you, if you start your shift, you feel unsafe and feel tired, you call after hours, say, I don't feel safe driving. We need to reschedule a load. But I felt fine, I was a little tired, wired. He said, it's my load home, you know? So, a micro sleep, what happens is, one second, you're wide awake, and a millisecond, a split second, you're asleep, and when you open your eyes, you could be in the ditch, and I was in the ditch. I was like, oh my God, I'm in the ditch, I'm in the ditch. And I stopped the truck. The truck wasn't damaged, the trailer wasn't damaged. I didn't hit anyone, you know, thankfully. And uh, I got stuck in the mud. Now what they told me at the meeting when they escorted me into a room was, it's not the incident, it's what could possibly happen now that's happened once. Hadn't happened in 10 years, but because it happened one time, selfishly and only protecting themselves, they said, we just need to fire you so that it can't happen again. We don't have any possible, possible liability ever again. End of story, you know? So they called me the next day and basically said to me, after almost 10 years, giving my whole life to night transportation, I told my folks for 10 years, almost 10 years, I love night transportation. I'm so happy I work for them. I'm not going anywhere. And here's the irony of this whole situation. And I'll get off on this because now it's like a year later. They offered me a $108,000 a year job previously because I had team experience. I had almost a million miles of night. I was a senior driver and I turned it down to be loyal to Madeline and the Phoenix Terminal, what they do, they fired me without even thinking about it. Madeline didn't even show up for the meeting. Some guy didn't even know. He called me the next day. He said, we have to have a conversation. So I had a conversation with him. He said, we're not gonna have any conversation. There's nothing to talk about. We're not gonna go down the rabbit hole. We've decided to terminate you. End of story, click. That was it. That's the way they treated me. So, it took me a long time, but here's one of the things I want to share with you. First of all, LC that I'm in with the picture, she's on my channel. She's awesome. She's a female driver. Um, she's married. She's not my girlfriend, anything like that. But I met her at the Phoenix Yard. And the interesting thing is she lived in Japan for six years while her husband was in the military. Um, I, had, I had my whole life invested in night. Here's the good news I want to share with you. My friend Sophia Rashkin, who I've known for 10 years, who was actually a millionaire in a million dollar internet business, she drove from Denver, Colorado to a little tiny town called Mexican Hat, Utah to meet with me. I've got the video footage, okay? Of she and I talking. Now,